Hello everybody. Well, I actually feel like I ripped off TJ Doheny a little bit simply by not breaking him down technically. Now, I know from what people have said that we all kind of figured that Doheny versus Inoue is a bit of a mismatch and that Inoue will likely just get him out of there um, within the first half of the fight. And absolutely, I think we can also agree that if we were going to call Inoue an A-class fighter, then Doheny is really, it's hard to give him any more than a, than a C plus. But that said, out of respect for the game, as they say, um, let me give you a little more of a breakdown on Doheny. So the, Doheny is 37 years old. He's an Irishman who fights out of Australia. And four fights ago, he put up a pretty good scrap with um, Sam Goodman uh, and came up on the losing end of that. Took, he took a fair amount of um, damage, including a, a cut um, on his uh, right eye in the corner. Now, I'm guessing that in, in that loss, uh, that may have played um, into Doheny, to Doheny's advantage because that was the s subsequently um, the uh, Japanese promoters um, brought him over for three fights in a row. Now, I'm not sure if that was like underestimate, un they, J the Japanese promoters underestimated um, Doheny or they overestimated their fighter. Um, interesting, interestingly enough, um, this fighter, that Japanese fighter that Doheny defeated is also out of the Ohashi boxing gym. So now I'm thinking maybe they, that sort of fit it, plays into the narrative even more of um, you know, why would they chose Doheny to uh, fight Nalia in a way. Um, it, it looks to me like they kind of, you know, gave um, Doheny a couple of easier opponents after he defeated the Japanese fighter and like now he's sort of ripened for the, uh, for them to feed to in a way as a viable opponent. Let's take a look at what Doheny does well in the ring. Well, overall, I mean, I, I'd ha say that he's fairly competent in all departments. In terms of defense, um, Doheny's fairly disciplined and he maintains his um, double guard up by about his chin or shoulder height. Um, I, I don't see him making any wild motions and, and sort of getting out of pocket, as they say, with his defense. Um, he's also able to slip and weave well. And while Doheny is more of a come-forward style fighter rather than a, a retreating boxer or um, someone who uses a lot of lateral movement, um, Doheny doesn't really, really put on a lot of pressure, so he doesn't need that um, double high guard where he'd have his thumbs glued to the upper part of his forehead. Doheny's footwork is okay. Um, he, he stays more or less on the balls of his feet, um, doesn't use a lot of... Uh, unnecessary extra movement. In other words, he doesn't bounce up and down a lot. Uh, he, uh, Doheny takes small uh, measured steps um, to get in and out of because uh, out of where, you know, change the distance. I, I wouldn't say he has wizardly footwork, but his footwork is fine. He's, he's always in balance. Um, his feet are the proper distance apart. He does not cross his feet, which is, as you know, one of my pet peeves. And as far as offenses weapons go, um, I think for sure Doheny, being a southpaw, his sort of best combo is his jab to his overhand left. That seems to be one of his bread and butter combinations to at least, um, you know, really start breaking down his opponents. But to his credit, Doheny also um, level changes well, he, so he'll shift his target from head to body. He jabs to the body well, throws his straight left to the body. And Doheny also has uh, very good um, body shots. He's been able to get some of his opponents out of there with either his overhand left starting all the trouble or um, one of his body shots starting all the trouble. And finally, um, one of Doheny's assets is that he, he, is, he seems to maintain sort of a, um, a disciplined mindset throughout the fight, like no matter what's happening, whether he's uh, taking, taking uh, he's getting... Um, so, I won't say beat up, but where, where he's taking a fair amount of punishment or whether he's the one dishing out the punishment, he doesn't seem to lose his cool. 
and when it when when it needs to become you know a dirty boxing style fight um, TJ is not afraid to scrap there are a few areas where I feel TJ Doheny could um, work on the first being um, his jab now he does throw his jab but he tends to fall into that trap that some southpaws uh, get into which is um, especially when you're when a southpaw is facing a, a righty the jabs tend to cancel out because they're on the same side of the body so every time you know one one person throws out a jab it just gets uh, caught not really totally parried but almost just it's almost as if they're both playing patty cake because they just keep touching the glove to the forearm or the glove to the glove repeatedly um, and there's there's like no real bad intention behind that type of jab it's just almost sort of an automatic reaction and unfortunately for TJ I feel like he's built this reflex where he just he just does that he throws out these sort of um, so-called jabs with zero bad intention on them and so I wish he would start working more on a penetrating jab a snapping jab and that that way he, you know if he starts to develop um, his feints a little better the, the feints will have more meaning because um, a feint only has meaning if, if the opponent ha has something to worry about, like they don't know if this is just a snap jab at the surface or it's going to be a penetrating jab that's really going to hurt potentially. Um, so uh, I, I just feel like TJ could work on the variety of his jabs. That would really help set up everything else that comes behind it. Um, Second uh, area for improvement for TJ would be he tends to always slip by bending over to his left, which, you know, is sort of the easier way, easier way for a southpaw to slip. It's easier for a right-handed person to slip um, to the right side. And that's simply because all we got to do is bend over at the waist, you know, let gravity do most of the work. It's much harder to slip to, as we say, the outside because now you've got to twist your upper torso your rear shoulder has to come forward and you've got to bend over and it's 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 not just that it's a little bit of an awkward position it literally really takes a lot more effort now that said um, I had the super good fortune of being um, a member at wildcard boxing gym um, back in the day when Manny Pacquiao was first starting out there uh, so us plebes or commoners were still allowed to uh, train in the gym at the same time as Manny was training and one drill that Freddie Roach would do with him like just relentlessly was have him you know on the mitts throw his combination and then weave under uh, Freddie's left hook out of a, a right hand stance um, so now Manny's weaving under and stepping to his right making a nice tight pivot and then coming back with counters to the head or body um, so you know I think TJ could develop that skill it's just it would take a lot of drilling. Um, the other issue, of course, with if TJ is going to always slip to his left, is you can do that with a with another southpaw because that means the southpaw's jab will go sailing over your um, your right shoulder and miss. But if you're always going to slip to your left against a right-handed person, that's not good because now you put your head in the line of fire for their power right hand. And as we know, uh, you know, in a way, has a terrific straight right hand. The third area that I think TJ Doheny can work on is um, his uh, distance management. So what he tends to do is stay way on the outside and throw these sort of punches that have, um, uh, you know, no intention of landing because he's just way too far away to land on his opponent. But he'll throw out a jab or this sort of right hand motion just to kind of see, I guess, how his opponent reacts. And then when TJ sees an opening, he'll kind of rapidly rush in on a straight line, close the distance, and maybe land his patented uh, jab overhand left. And then, you know, try to start working the body or continue to unleash once he's closed that distance. Or if uh, his opponent sort of gets wise and just starts clinching up, you know, TJ will start to scrap and turn it into like a dirty boxing style fight. But the thing is, he's either way on the outside, too far to land, or he's way on the inside and just unloading. But I feel like he's he's got to um, start working on 
better distance management so he's comfortable just either getting in and out very adeptly um, he's got to get comfortable working angles so he can be at mid-range or he can be like on the inside and um, and fight more effectively on the inside so in fact against in a way I, th I think this must might be the um, sort of most fatal flaw um, simply because um, in a way is absolutely masterful at his distance management um, of course with all his other weapons uh, that that I broke down in the um, the breakdown between Inoue and Neri. Um, I'll put a link up to that. Uh, I'm, I feel like as if, if Doheny just tries to stay constantly on the outside, that'll be um, a problem with Inoue because he'll just he'll just close the distance, um, take angles, cut the ring off, and uh, unload. Or if um, Doheny just t tries to rush in on a straight line forward, um, you know, Naoya is just gonna counter him um, hard. So those those tactics that um, Doheny's gotten away with up to this point uh, could really turn out to be fatal flaws versus Naoya Inoue. Now I'm I'm not going to break down Naoya Inoue uh, simply because all the um, factors that I had mentioned before in the Neri fight I feel still stand. Um, in summary, um, summary, I mean, we, we could use this sort of letter grade uh, analogy. I think we'd have to give um, Naoya Inoue at least an A, A+. Plus. And again, I, I just don't feel like um, Doheny's anything above a C. And for those of you who uh, enjoy cognac, or those of you who tend bar, perhaps we could use that analogy and say, well, you know what, um, for sure Inoue's top shelf at the very least. Maybe you keep him locked up behind uh, behind closed doors in another cabinet somewhere, only to be taken out on special occasion, whereas uh, a fighter like Doheny would be just, you know, the, the brandy, I guess, that if someone asked for a brandy that, you know, whatever that house brandy is, that's that's where he's at. So it's, it's not really a fair um, comparison. It's, it's almost not fair to sort of break them down in terms of matching them up but um, but I wanted to give you know a fair shake to Dehaney in terms of just te technical um, abilities in the ring so as I said in that other uh, breakdown I do feel that um, Dehaney is kind of the opponent of convenience shall we say um, but you know what he, he earned this opportunity so we gotta wish him well I'm, I'm kind of guessing that he sort of earned the slot, so to speak, uh, because the Japanese promoters um, saw in him, you know, when he lost to Sam Goodman, they saw a guy who was just going to continue to try to fight no matter what, even though he was uh, taking some damage um, and, you know, likely knew he was going to lose the deci decision, but yet and still he, he continued to fight on through the entire 12 rounds. And that type of fighter is sort of the perfect, the perfect opponent um, because they're not going to quit. Um, they're going to make the fight happen, so to speak. They're going to keep coming, but they're 100% beatable. So best of luck to uh, both fighters. I sure as heck hope um, TJ Doheny, uh, his manager, uh, negotiated a great deal for him. This is probably going to be... Um, the pinnacle of his of his fight career so uh you know i, I yeah i'm hoping he, he gets a really good payday out of this and uh you know can continue to fight if he feels like it but um you know let's hope that this will this will be some life-changing money for him well that said uh do you think Naoya in a way can move up to 126 and do well there how about 130 do you think that's a possibility I mean, he said he, he doesn't want to move up until he feels his, his body's ready, number one. Number two, this is already the fourth weight division he's pretty much dominated. So where do you think the limit is for Naoya the Monster Inoue? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this breakdown, please feel free to leave a super thanks or head over to buymeacoffee.com slash Hamaguchi Fight. And if you're enjoying the content on this channel, I also invite you to join our membership side. 
you get a really cool uh, colored belt badge next to your name. You get priority in terms of replies from me. You help drive channel content. And you'll also have a, decision, have a say in the decision as to where we donate 10% of our gross revenues as soon as, whenever we get paid out by YouTube itself. Thanks again for listening.